Hey everyone, welcome back to Pajama Crafts, where I do crafts in my pajamas. Today I'm showing you guys what I did with two of the things that I got from Goodwill lately. So for the first sign, I started out with this sign from Goodwill for $5.99. I really liked it and I thought it was worth the price since it had the frame on it. These are a little bit difficult for me to do since I don't have... A bigger space set up with saws and things like that if I want to use my saw I have to take it outside and set something up so I really like that this already had the frame on it this is definitely not a stain or the colors that I would choose so I'm just going around the edge of the inside and putting some painters tape so that I can paint the frame easily you hear Brie in the background <laughs> Of course, I will have some pictures of her at the end of the video like usual. She turned 10 months old this past week and she also went swimming for the first time with her brother. So I'll put some pictures of that in um, at the end of the video too. They're super cute. <laughs> So I mixed up some black and gray chalk paint to get the color that I was going for and I just painted this all over the whole frame with a brush and then you don't see me do this but I actually used some um, of the Waverly wax in the color white to distress the frame. I actually <laughs> accidentally used the wax on the um, sign part of it I thought it was paint when I bought it and I did not even realize that they sold wax um, like when with the Waverly brand I didn't even know they had that at Walmart so I just was in a hurry and I grabbed the white chalk paint I thought but it was actually um, wax and I painted that all over the inside you guys this sign has taken me so long to get done because I messed up so many times and had to sand it back down on the inside but um, when I realized that I had used wax on the inside, I did sand that down and then I repainted the inside with the Waverly um, white chalk paint, <laughs> the actual paint. But I really liked, um, I had some of the wax left on a paper towel, so I just used that to distress the outside of the frame or the edges, yeah, of the frame. And I thought it looked really cool. So here you can see I've already sanded down that wax and you guys, I felt it was so smooth like after the wax. But anyway, now I'm just taking the paint in the color plaster and I'm just covering that entire sign. I didn't put tape on the inside of the um, frame because I just honestly didn't feel like it and I thought it came out okay anyway because... I really like to distress everything and so I wasn't too worried if I got a tiny bit on the edges um, but I used a brush when I did this and unfortunately it went on too thick so in some places it's actually kind of like so thick that it cracked instead of drying how it should have and so even after this layer of paint I did have to go back over it with my electric sander, I sand it all back down and then I did one more coat of the white with a foam brush, just like a thin, thin layer. And that came out perfectly to where everything was finally even and one color and looked good. And then that's when I started my lettering. So I did hand letter this word myself. As you can see, it did not come out perfect the first time. So you guys, if you're um, thinking of not trying something because you might not be good at it, I suggest just try it anyway. What do you have to lose? Um, I tried it. I thought it was going to be so bad, but it actually came out pretty nice. At least I thought it did. This is the second word I've ever done. So you guys, just practice makes perfect. Once I get a little bit better and maybe I'll try to show you guys again how I do it and like some tips and all that but I just used a sharpie and if you don't want to do the hand lettering or you've already tried before and you're not it's not for you 
um, just go ahead and get a stencil or you can um, print it off of the computer um, but you can just if you're using a stencil you can just outline it and fill it in with paint but if you're using um, something you printed off of the computer or hand lettering like mine you'll want to take a pencil like you see me doing here and just um, cover the entire back of the letters and then you're going to go ahead and press as hard as you can with a pen um, onto the sign and that's going to transfer the uh, lead to the sign if that makes sense and then you can trace it with your paint marker and then go over it with the paint or fill it in with the paint i always suggest using a paint marker to outline your letter your letters um just because it's so much easier to fill in a big bold line than use than to like fill in a pencil with paint it's just so much easier in my opinion so i would definitely say give that a try if you have trouble um, filling in your letters and making them very clean and precise i'm just using some black matte apple barrel paint from walmart to fill in the word together i want to thank everyone who watches my videos and subscribes to my channel um, and just supports my channel I love you guys so much and I really appreciate it. Um, I love making these videos for you and I know um, I'm not able to always post on a schedule like I should. I can't um, post a certain day of the week because sometimes I just don't get a video done by the time I want to post it. And that's just how it is as a stay-at-home mom of a baby <laughs> and a 12-year-old. Um, but I really appreciate you guys watching my videos whenever I am able to get them up. And I just appreciate your support so much. I'm so excited that we're so close to 5,000 subscribers. Um, keep watching and sharing and commenting on these videos. Once we get to 5,000 subscribers, I will do another giveaway. And I can't wait to show you guys what I'm going to be giving away um, when we do get to those 5,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for always watching and supporting my videos. So I'm just writing together is my favorite place to be. This is one of my favorite sayings. I love spending time with my family. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, and so I just wanted to make a sign for our home that expressed that. Um, and then so for the other words here, I'm using a stencil from Walmart. These are really cheap and you can get um, several in a pack. I think three come in a pack of different kinds of letters or, you know, different fonts. Um, but I really like this font and I'm just writing is my on the first line. And then after that, I go from the end of the word my and move backwards, if that makes sense, so that my letters and my words are all lined up um, on the right side. You'll see what I mean here as I go along. Now, as you can see with this stencil, it does leave the little spaces in between the letters. Um, and I like to have the letters connected, so I just go ahead and connect those. Um, that's just a personal preference. You don't have to do that at all, but I think it makes it look more neat and clean, even though I'm going to distress this afterwards. But we want to look like it was originally a nice sign. <laughs> you guys will probably never see me not distress something. I love everything distressed, antique country farmhouse whatever you want to call it if it looks old it's for me so you're if, if you're on this channel you're gonna be seeing that so that's just know that's what you're gonna see on here i don't even know what i'm saying right now but just go along with it <laughs> so i'm just using some of that elephant gray chalk paint um from waverly from walmart and i'm just um getting that some of that off on a paper towel and then i'm just dry brushing that onto the sign you can barely see it on the camera sorry because i use my phone and hopefully at some point i will get a camera but um it doesn't pick up very well when it's just really light distressing but you can see it in real life <laughs> and it is just very very lightly distressed 
I like to um, not have too many streaks so this is the way I go and then you can always build up and add more and more um, but I just don't like to have those big streaks so this is the way I do it and hopefully you can see in the picture um, that it's a little bit distressed so next I wanted to show you guys what I did with the bird cage that I got from Goodwill so it first came looking like this with all of these old um, flowers and greenery on it and I just wanted to remove all of that you never know um, what's on there especially with those kind of cloth fabrics they can really absorb a lot of icky stuff so I just wanted to remove all of that plus it looked kind of old and dingy at this point I got this for $7.99 I thought it was a steal I don't really know how much how much this would be originally or how much it's worth it looks pretty antique to me so I just really like the look of it so it's worth it to me so I did go ahead and pick that up and I removed all of those flowers and greenery um, and they were just hot glued on there so it wasn't too hard and I just got a piece of paper just a regular piece of paper and I'm just tracing around the bottom of the birdcage I just want to cut out this piece of paper and put it on the inside because I'm gonna be using moss inside of the cage I didn't want that all to fall out the bottom so I'm just putting the paper in the bottom you're not gonna see it it's gonna be covered so I just um, you can use any piece of paper cardboard whatever works for you now I'm just using some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree and poking that down in there I made a little hole for this bird to sit down in there since it is standing on like a pedestal I don't know what you call that um, but since it's raised up I wanted it to look like it was more sitting in the moss so I just kind of made a little hole and then I have another bird too that came with it and so I just made a little space for him in there as well you could put eggs or anything really in here but I wanted to use some flowers that I had already cut for its previous project and these flowers I feel like they look like little wildflowers they're so pretty for spring and summer and I just thought it would go perfectly with this so I just kind of poked those in and around the edges of the cage and around the birds and um, these came from Hobby Lobby I don't know if I already said that um, but I got these 50% off and I've been using the same bunch for like tons of projects already there and they are so pretty and look so real um, and I think they were totally worth it for the extra money they cost um, I'm definitely getting my money's worth so many come on the bunch and like I said they were already on sale um, so I think I got a really great deal with these they're just my favorite flowers that I found so far just so so dainty and pretty and so um, so perfect for spring and summer and that's pretty much all I did for this of course you could add more flowers or butterflies or anything you want to the top of it um, but I just didn't have a lot of time and I thought it looked cute already um, just the way I had it so I just went ahead and left it like that and I might do more to it later um, but I was debating you know if I maybe I'll get some old books I love to change decor like this out um, because it's so easy you don't have to glue anything you can pull things in and out and change it for the season or you know if you're just getting bored of a certain thing and you want to change it up you could add old books um, in there just there's so many options I've even seen on Pinterest like old antique dishes inside of them I don't know there's so many ways that you can decorate these and I think that's why I love them so much but I think this came out really cute let me know down in the comments which project you like the best. I also already started making decor for the 4th of July. Let me know down in the comments as well if you guys want to see that right away or if you think I should hold off on that. Is it too soon for 4th of July decor or do you want to see it now so that you have time to recreate the looks that I am doing for you guys? Let me know. So like I said, we went swimming for the first time the other day this summer. Um, it was so, so nice. It was really hot out. The pool was a little bit cold, um, but Bree just splashed, splashed her legs around in there. 
and she was so excited she had so much fun she also turned 10 months old so I took these pictures of her out in the grass and she just loved it <laughs> it was her first time in the grass thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more DIYs like these and I will see you guys next time bye